Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, October 17th, 2016. I'm your host, Owen Schroyer. Here's what's on the news tonight. Tonight, political terrorism strikes North Carolina as anti-Trump vandals firebomb the GOP headquarters. And Donald Trump says the act was committed by animals representing Hillary Clinton. Horrific act of political terror. Then, while Vladimir Putin tells the Russian people to prepare for war with the United States, a Kremlin insider says he believes there could be a major conflict before the election. Meanwhile, Vice President Joe Biden threatens Russia with a cyber attack. And the globalists close out all of Russia Today's UK bank accounts and cut off WikiLeaks internet service. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, folks, we've got a plethora of news to cover, some highlights from the weekend, a lot of stories from today. Times are truly crazy. It's hard enough just trying to figure out everything that's going on. But then to try to tie it all together is one of the serious challenges that we embark on here at InfoWars every day. So that's what we're going to try to do for you tonight. Now, you probably heard about the firebombing attack in North Carolina over the weekend. Governor Pat McCrory said that this was an attack on our democracy, and he could not have said it any better. And this is what's going on right now, and we're seeing it with the election. It's been going on for a long time. But people are finally starting to see that there is truly a war with our democracy right now. And it's time for the republic to stand up. And we're starting to see that. Now, Donald Trump, of course, had to go to Twitter and he blamed animals representing Hillary Clinton and Democrats in North Carolina. Now, Donald, I don't think we needed you to tweet that out. But we know that Donald likes to fire from the hip. He has no filter. And he went ahead and said that. And it turns out he might he might actually be right. We'll see what comes up with more WikiLeaks. We'll see what comes up with more from Project Veritas. But we do know that the Democratic Party is responsible for social unrest and promoting violence. Now, Clinton, um, her campaign tweeted out the attack on Orange County headquarters in the North Carolina GOP office is horrific and unacceptable. Very grateful that everyone is safe. This is a total fraud, folks. We have caught them. They love inciting violence. They want to incite violence at Trump rallies. So nice try, Hillary Clinton, but we caught you red-handed thanks to Project Veritas. Now, Dallas Woodhouse, an executive director of the state GOP called the bombing political terrorism, he said the only thing important to us is that nobody was killed. And that is something that seriously could have happened here, folks. Do you think that these people who were firebombing the headquarters even thought of that? Uh, I would guess that they didn't. They're not that bright. And he said, whether you are a Republican, Democrat, or independent, all Americans should be outraged, outraged by this hate-filled and violent attack against our democracy. I'm not seeing too much outrage on the mainstream media. Everyone in this country should be free to express their political viewpoints without fear of their own safety. But unfortunately, in this election cycle, that's not the case if you like Donald Trump. A lot of people are afraid to even put a Trump sticker on their car because... Well, we've seen what happens. Windows smashed in, tire slashed. Now, of course, CNN, they went ahead and they blamed this firebombing on Donald Trump as if, <laughs> I mean, this is right out of 1984. I can't even believe that they would go this low. But CNN host Brian Selter did blame more or less Donald Trump for this firebombing, of course, blaming his rhetoric. Now, of course, they wrote Nazis, Nazi Republicans get out of town or else. Hillary Clinton is funded by George Soros. We've actually got more ties with uh, Clinton and Soros coming up tonight in the news. And then Stelter goes on. He says, we have no idea who has done this. We don't know if it's Republicans, Democrats, or a movement. Give me a break. We know exactly who did this. The people that your news outlet is triggering in the public. That's who did this. And, and really, you're going to blame Republicans? And then do you see how he inserts the word movement in there? That's also a way of trying to tie Donald Trump and his voters into this firebombing, because this is what the Trump movement really is. It is a movement, and Donald Trump has said that, and other uh, people like Senator Sessions have said that. Now, you may have heard of Max Spears. You may not have heard of him. Personally, I had never heard of him, but he was a UFO conspiracy theorist who died under very suspicious circumstances, 
and the UK has refused to investigate his death. UK authorities will not investigate the circumstances surrounding the death of a British conspiracy theorist in Poland. Now, two days before he died, he uh, was messaging his mother saying he was in trouble and if anything happens to him, investigate. Friends of him, uh, friends of his said that he was vomiting black liquid and complaining of migraines for several days. So that's pretty wild. Again, I'd never heard of this guy before, but you know, usually when they off someone, this does draw light uh, to those individuals. Now all of a sudden I looked into his work and um, we're gonna have more on this actually later, but um, worth mentioning, um, suspicious death of a UFO conspiracy theorist and they refuse to investigate. I don't know why you wouldn't investigate that, but I guess that's none of my business. Now, Joe Biden, we've done some reports on this. Joe Biden is essentially threatening Russia with cyber warfare. This is an unprecedented move for any government to threaten cyber warfare, but this is what Joe Biden has decided to do. And he suggested that the Obama administration may launch a uh, retaliatory cyber strike against Russia in response to what Washington believes was interference by Moscow in this election. So this is actually crazy. We actually have the proof that the DNC is tampering with elections. We've caught them red handed, but here's Joe Biden with no proof blaming Russia. And now we'll tie this up in a second, but more on Biden. He says, we have the capacity to do it. It will be at the time of our choosing and under circumstances that have the greatest impact. He is threatening Russia on television. And we're gonna sit here and wonder if Donald Trump has the right temperament to be president when the vice president is threatening Russia on television. And then I don't know if this guy's very bright. When asked, when Biden was asked if the public would ever find out about the nature of the response, he said, hope not. Really? You're just talking about it on television, threatening Russia on television, and you're just hoping that this somehow remains secret. I guess this is him exposing how he feels about the American public, that they're so in the dark, they have no clue what's going on, they're so brainwashed that he can just do it right out in the middle of daylight and get away with it. Isn't that kind of what's been going on for a while now, though? And then he said their capacity to fundamentally alter the election is not what people think, and I tell you to the extent that they do, we will be proportional in what we do. Again, threatening Russia and perhaps setting up a false flag. Now, this is something that Russia is responding to. Primetime host warns of secret plot. Putin appointed Russian TV host Dmitry Kisilov asserts that the United States could stage a fake provocation to go to war with Russia and Syria. Now, you look at this, you say, okay, this guy's, you know, he's been appointed by Putin. How should I trust him? But he does bring up good points and he mentions the Vietnam War, which the United States staged the Gulf of Tonkin to instigate that. And he also mentioned how we have invaded Iraq and Libya under false pretenses. So he does actually make fair points. And you know, if you wanna play nonpartisan here, you do have to take him for what he's saying. And it's noteworthy because this is a primetime television host in Russia that enjoys the largest audience among news programs in Russia. So where is our mainstream media, folks? What is our TV media talking about? They're up here warning about false flag, cyber terror, and war. And you know what we're talking about on the mainstream media? Excuse my French, but we're talking about grabbing pussy, okay? So there's the difference between Russia's media and ours. Take that for what it is. Now, does this have a link to Joe Biden's threat? Assange's internet link intentionally severed by state party. This is actually coming from WikiLeaks. Uh, RT has also wrote a story. WikiLeaks has activated con contingency plans after its co-founder, co-founder's internet service was intentionally cut off by a state actor, the media organization said in a tweet. So are there any ties um, to this and John Kerry's threat of cyber warfare? Is he colluding with Ecuador? Is he threatening Assange or people who are cooperating with Assange? We might actually have some evidence of that. This is a story out of the BBC RT NatWest NatWest to close Russian channels UK bank accounts. So again, does this have ties to Kerry talking about cyber attacks? Could this be because RT broadcast things that these banks don't like? Is this kind of a, a, a war of 
politics, geopolitics, uh, economic politics going on here. Uh, the strange thing about it is, as of right now, RT is still waiting for a reason. Um, so they just have their bank accounts shut down and they uh, are yet to even be given a reason for that. So that is something that is very strange. Now, here's another dynamic difference between the United States government and the Russian government. This is a story from Infowars.com. Kremlin insider, war might begin even before the United States elections, urging citizens to stockpile cans of food. They've been doing this for a while. And they also just had a, a drill with millions, I believe, of Russian state uh, actors doing a drill for what they would do in a nuclear war. But Sergei Markov, a member of the Civic Chamber, a Moscow-based state institution, told the Daily Beast, these are the most serious tensions between Moscow and Washington in decades. The war might begin before the November elections in the United States. So, you know, our president is out golfing. Uh, he's smelling his hand as he's uh, going to Hillary Clinton rallies. And, um, you know, one of our presidential candidates is going unconscious at 9-11 events, but Here's people coming from inside the Kremlin that are trying to warn people. He said, I personally plan to stock 200 cans of pork to be ready for a potential war crisis, and I advise everybody to do the same. Our government is certainly stockpiling. We know about that, but I don't really hear too much from our media or our government uh, warning that we need to stockpile food. We need to be prepared for a war with Russia. It's just not happening. So will the mainstream media cover any of that? I doubt it. Will the mainstream media cover this? 1,000 more people shot in Chicago compared with this same time a year ago. 1,000 more people have been shot in Chicago this year compared with the same time last year. Now, will we see Black Lives Matter protests? Will we see any media covering this? I don't think so. But somehow in a gun-free zone, we see plenty of guns. I wonder when logic will kick in on that nonsensical legislation. Now, folks, this might be the biggest thing that we are facing. This might be the biggest thing that we are dealing with. And it appears that Americans are finally starting to wake up to this. Poll from Politico, 41% of voters say election could be stolen from Donald Trump. This is a political morning consult poll conducted among uh, almost 2,000 registered voters, October 13th through the 15th, shows that Trump repeated warnings about a rigged election are having effect. Yeah, it's not just Trump. We have WikiLeaks, we have Project Veritas. We've had a, a dozens of independent investigations on this. We are very aware of how they rigged elections. 73% of Republicans think the election can, could be swiped from him. Just 17% of Democrats agree with the prospect of massive fraud at the ballot box. And how ironic is this? It's the Democrats that have been caught with election fraud. And it's the Democrats who are sitting here acting like it doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's a very interesting um, paradoxical logic to be a Democrat. I really don't understand. The public sentiment is beginning to reflect Trump's campaign message. Now, this is the power of Donald Trump, folks. This has been one of the things for me personally that I've um, been enjoying with the Donald Trump campaign is that he takes things that we have been trying to get in the mainstream for years and he forces them there. He forces them into the mainstream. And this is just another example. Now we've got, again, now states are starting to investigate allegations of voter fraud. This is happening in Texas. The Star Telegram reports allegations of voter fraud in Tarrant County are under investigation by the state. And of course, you know, we've got DHS and Joe Biden and everybody warning you that it's Russia that wants to hack our elections. It's Russia we need to be worried about. Now, this is on the heels of another report from last week that we covered. Voter fraud is real. Here's the real proof. We covered this, and it goes over it, how dead people are voting. Uh, vote harvesting is going on. Look into that. That's unbelievable crime. So we, we already know this is going on, but they want to try to trick you into thinking that it's Russia so they can stage World War III with Russia. Now, Here's where it gets really interesting. Soros board member chairs firm running online voting for Tuesday's Utah caucuses. This is an older story, but this is George Soros with Lord Mark Malik Brown using their electronic voting machines for Republican elections. Now, these are huge Democrat supporters, folks. Now, this is very important. Smartmatic, as we can see right here, is one of the biggest systems used for the United States elections. 
It has commissions of 307 counties in 16 different states. In 2006, Smartmatic signed what at the moment was the largest election automation contract in U.S. history. Now look at this. You want to tell me that these election scene uh, machines are going to be fair? Mark Malak Brown is a former member of two uh, in the United Nations. I'm sorry, he's a former number two in the United Nations. He's also had positions including vice chairman of George Soros Investments Funds. He was with the George Soros Open Society Institute, vice president at the World Bank, lead international partner at Sawyer Miller, a political consulting firm, and he's also served as the vice chairman of the World Economic Forum. So the guy who runs Smartmatic, which runs the United States elections, has close ties with George Soros. George Soros has close ties with Hillary Clinton. We can see that George Soros is one of the biggest donors of the Clinton campaign. We have the WikiLeaks. She has a tight relation with Soros. She even goes to dinner with him. Uh, that just reeks of corruption. Anybody who's not concerned about electronic rigged voting machines is sleeping under a rock. Now, what's up with Bernie? Bernie is still campaigning for Clinton. I really don't understand this. Are his supporters still buying this? This is, could be a big thing that could swing the election where Bernie supporters go, but he really has made himself look like quite the fool. Now here's something, over 4,500 redaction in Hillary FBI documents. Folks, this is absurd. The FBI claims it's trying to be transparent. You go and you look at these redactions. <laughs> go, ahead and, go ahead and look at these redactions please for me real quick. Some of them are whole pages. Some of them are whole pages redacted. It is absolutely absurd. But even in the stuff that's not redacted, we can see how people that Clinton has worked with do not like her at all. She is not fun to work with. Scientists are now creating eggs in a lab from scratch and producing healthy offspring. Humans grown in petri dishes. It's unbelievable. We'll be right back with more on the InfoWars Nightly News. As Americans turn the corner towards the final presidential debate on Wednesday, the election circus has devolved into personal attacks and character assassination rather than any real focus on the issues plaguing the United States. The media outlets did not even attempt to confirm the most basic facts because even a simple investigation would have shown that these were nothing more than false smears. Facing an avalanche of new accusations from women who are coming forward to claim he kissed and fondled them. Six women are going public today with stories that echo what Trump himself said in that notorious hot mic video. He called this woman Miss Piggy. Found Her name Where is Alicia Machado. Where Trump spoke out about those claims on Fox News. And she was the worst we ever had. The worst, the absolute worst. And, uh, you know, she gained a massive amount of weight, and uh, it, was, it was a real problem. Regardless of the fact that Obama's unconstitutional open border policy is quietly responsible for killing as many as 7,500 Americans every year, 20 on average per day, due to the hordes of illegal drivers flooding the roads, while Obama creates a pilot program to have Americans pay for Syrian refugees to come to the United States and move into our homes. Regardless of the fact that food stamp participation has increased by 78% over the past 10 years, regardless of the fact that Obama and Hillary's new Cold War rhetoric amplified by a suicidal mainstream media has obliterated any shred of integrity 6% of Americans still think cable-fed propaganda media has after polls revealed America is almost completely done with the mainstream media. Mainstream media's stranglehold of propaganda desperation and damage was palpable on the campaign trail as if its demise was what truly concerns Americans, but obviously has panicked the ruling elite. He doesn't have the temperament, he doesn't have the knowledge, he doesn't seem to have the interest in acquiring the knowledge or the basic honesty that a president needs to have. And that was true before we heard him talking about how he treats women. This is not something that we can ignore. It's not something we can just sweep under the rug as just another disturbing footnote in a sad election season. Well, we've been learning quite a lot from the treasure trove of information dumped by WikiLeaks. Something of particular interest, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, John Podesta, is obsessed with aliens. 
Oh, and we are the conspiracy theorists. Now, investigative journalist Wayne Madsen has a really great article up at InfoWars.com saying it's actually UFO hunters, not the Russians, who've hacked Podesta. And they hacked John Podesta. He was targeted for what he knows about ETs. Now, this might sound sensational, but this article really breaks it down, gets into kind of the history of WikiLeaks, uh, all these hacker collectives. Madsen points out that the main quest of computer hackers would be for the holy grail of U.S. government data files. They're popularly known as the X-Files. Now, our journalist Wayne Madsen joins me now to break down this story, get into these outrageous emails, and you, why you say it's, it's not Assange and the Russians. Julian Assange today has always been a hacker and will always be a hacker. Uh, he was very active in hacking uh, internationally in various computer systems and networks in the late 80s and early 90s. In the early 90s, we had the uh, advent of a uh, quite popular television show, The X-Files. And if people recall, there was a spinoff to that show called The Lone Gunman. And the lone gunmen were four computer hackers. Look, Chris Carter, the guy that came up with the X-Files, didn't just dream that up because in those early days, and this, this is going back to pre-World Wide Web. Uh, this is when people would access bulletin board systems and systems via CompuServe, Prodigy, and America Online. And, and this is when Assange and his fellow cypherpunks we're very active in trying to break in to various government computer systems. And in those days, the holy grail, as I call it, was anything you could possibly get on UFOs. You know, Roswell, Area 51, and that has never died among the uh, hacker community. And now with the web being the way it is, and Hillary really, uh, you know, she sounded the dog whistle on a talk show where she said, uh, yes, yeah, she's in favor of uh, as much disclosure as possible. Her husband, Bill Clinton, said essentially the same thing. Well, this attracts every hacker in the world, people like this fellow McKinnon, who was indicted a few years back by the United States, a Scottish uh, hacker, uh, uh, was said he was hacking into government computer systems in the United States looking for information on UFO. He's not the only one. There's many uh, like him. And uh, I, I just, when I saw this blaming the Russians for this, it's so ludicrous. First of all, the Russian intelligence service isn't going to live, leave digital breadcrumbs to lead them back to SVR or FSB headquarters in Moscow. Uh, and never, never ascribe to Russian intelligence what can be more easily uh, ascribe to computer hackers looking for information about what Podesta knows, what Hillary knows, what Bill Clinton knows, because they have certainly said this is a major interest of theirs. Right, because of course, John Podesta was chief of staff for Bill Clinton. They are now uh, chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign. But let's take a look at some of the emails that are actually very interesting. Now, a lot of has been reported about Tom DeLong, who is the former lead singer of Blink-182. And he was, for some reason, emailing John Podesta. They were doing a documentary. So obviously there's something that's gonna be forthcoming with that part of the Disclosure Project. But one of the emails that I thought was really interesting was from Edgar D. Mitchell. He's an Apollo 14 astronaut, six man to walk on the moon. Um, he is saying, you know, John, I'd love to just have a little bit of your time to meet to discuss Disclosure and Zero Point Energy. We can talk to my Catholic colleague, Terry Mansfield, to bring us up to date on the Vatican's awareness of extraterrestrial intelligence. Another colleague is working on a new space treaty, citing involvement with Russia and China. They're pursuing a route for peace in space and zero point energy on Earth. And then there's another one where they're talking about this war in space race, where he says, Remember, our nonviolent ETI from the contiguous universe are helping us bring zero point energy to Earth. They will not tolerate any forms of military violence on Earth or in space. And then goes on to talk about Carol and I have been working on the treaty on the prevention of the placement of weapons in outer space attached for your convenience. What? <laughs> so obviously here with John Podesta, we have Apollo 14 astronaut saying, look, 
let's talk about our nonviolent extraterrestrial intelligence out there that's helping us. So I think it's this is they've kind of found what they were looking for, these hackers. And, and, and they've been, as I say, they've been looking at it for a long time. And I have to point out, I, I know John Podesta from years back when I when I was involved in uh, computer security issues. He used to be the chief lobbyist for a group called the Electronic Mail Association, formed in the 1980s, trying to get people to use email rather than the normal U.S. Postal Service. And, um, and, and of course, he was very cognizant at the time of the hacker threat, even then, even back to the days of, 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 of CompuServe and Prodigy and Lotus Notes and America Online. So he knows full well that it was the hacker community uh, that, that has always targeted this environment for information about UFOs. He's actually part of that whole operation. And for him to suggest it was the Russians that were behind it, and he's obviously convinced Hillary of that and Obama and these, these uh, ne'er-do-wells that uh, head up our intelligence services like James Clapper, who has no clue as to what's going on, in my opinion, um, well, I mean, uh, they owe, I think they owe an apology to the Russian government. And while they're at it, with all this belief in uh, intergalactic or interstellar uh, treaties, they probably should apologize to that alien hair guy <laughs> on the History Channel while they're at it. Yeah, exactly. And of course, you know, they point out here in the, the Podesta email that uh, Russia's actions in the Ukraine is what they're kind of wanting to cut them out of this space peace treaty deal because the Russians were kind of doing their own thing. So it's really incredibly interesting. So I encourage everyone to go to Infowars.com, read this article. It gets into great detail. I mean, six pages long with all of the hacker collectives and their ties to the KGB, everything. It's report UFO hunters, not Russians, hacked Podesta. Wayne Madsen, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be speaking with you soon. Gonna be with you. We have seen unprecedented bias against Donald Trump and his supporters in the last year and a half during this campaign. But on the issue of the Clinton Foundation stealing close to $2 billion of Haitian aid relief, even the Washington Post and the New York Times have admitted they did it. But they say it was a mistake or they screwed up. And we've got Chelsea's emails to her credit saying, thousands are dying, mom and dad. We gotta give them the money. 97 plus percent of the money they were given never got there. The Clintons only have about 3% uh, to 5%, depending on the year, of the money they raise to charity as well. This is truly monstrous. It is, it is so diabolical. So after the hurricane hit over a week ago, I began to talk to the crew about trying to get into Haiti, but no commercial aircraft were going in. And then out of the blue, Gary Haven, a billionaire, patriot, friend of the show, called me about a week ago and he said, you know, I fly aid missions in every week and I've been doing it since the earthquake hit five years ago. And he said, would you like to come in your crew? And I said, absolutely. We were just trying to get a crew in there. I hadn't thought of you. And Gary got him into the country for five days. And I've been watching since they got back last night, hours of this footage. And it's so staggering. It's so haunting that I don't even feel worthy to try to bring this info out, try to help these people. I mean, they've got footage of people dying. The UN there letting children die and not even fly them 30 minutes to the capital of Haiti. I've got private planes coming in with food that basically the UN takes control of. I have got footage of the public almost rioting when they hear the name Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton because they know they represented Haiti for several years and took the money from good Americans and others that gave it. We are going through hours of footage. I've got Gary Haven, the pilot, on tomorrow with our crew that was there, Joe Biggs and Michael Zimmerman. Here's just a few clips of what's coming up. Uh, just to grasp the true horror of this and the loss of humanity and 10,000 people dying of cholera and other diseases because the UN used the water supply that was set up as a latrine to crap in. Attention needs to be drawn to the disaster that we've seen in Haiti and the fact that the Clintons and the UN and other globalist opportunists only made things much worse while posing as a bunch of saviors and getting rich off of it. 
This is unprecedentedly evil. It needs to be exposed. That's why I'm asking all of you to share this video and to join us tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Wednesday on the eve of the big debate when we expose this because we're trying to force this out as a major campaign issue. And Trump is very close to going to Haiti himself. And no matter what happens with this election, Trump will draw a lot of attention to it and hopefully help the people of embattled Haiti. We're also going to be going over some charities that are known to give over 90% of the money to the Haitians and others, unlike the Clintons, who keep over 90%. So join us tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Infowars.com forward slash show. Clinton loves to point out how much of a totalitarian Vladimir Putin is, axing journalists who dare expose government corruption there in Russia. But let's take a look at what we can expect from a Hillary Clinton dictatorship. She is already at war with the First Amendment. She's made it abundantly clear that she is going after any of the media that she can't control. Most recently, her campaign website features a hit piece on the dark heart Alex Jones, who, of course, she name dropped in her recent alt media speech. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. I will not let you down. The official story is a fable, and an inside job is the only explanation. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. They're the ones running ISIS. I mean, I've interviewed the cops. And the, and, and the people that saw the feds plant the bombs in Oklahoma City. I think we'll be speaking a lot. I think she's going to show up and uh, on drugs, though. She's going to be blacked out. <laughs> I will not let you down. She's a freaking demon and she stinks. And so does Obama. And I go like, what? Sulfur. And I have the government documents where they said they're going to encourage homosexuality with chemicals so that people don't have children. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the freaking frogs gay. And I'll tell you, it is surreal to talk about issues here on air and then word for word hear Trump say it two days later. It is amazing. And new WikiLeaks emails reveal that she did absolutely nothing to lift the UK travel ban on talk show host Michael Savage. Now, Savage had his travel ban to the UK by the government's top Homeland Security official in 2009. This is along with terrorists and neo-Nazi murderers, the pretext being that his views might provoke violence. Now, as an American citizen, Savage appealed directly to Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State to help him uh, defend his First Amendment rights. But now we see with these new emails that Hillary Clinton herself said to her aides, let's hold on doing anything until we all talk. Apparently, they didn't want to come off as hypocritical. Uh, Cheryl Mills points out that the same ban imposed by the UK on Savage could happen in the US under current law. So this is coming from a woman who could be president and her top aide saying, you know, we could do the same kind of ban here in the US. You know, we don't want to come off as hypocrites. Now, in response to her email being hacked, you'll recall that she said she would, was ready to take military action against Russia for the cyber war. Well, now U.S. Vice President Joe Biden is issuing these same type of suggestions. He says the Obama administration may launch a retaliatory cyber strike against Russia in response to what Washington believes to be uh, interference by Moscow in this year's election. So no proof of that, but they want everyone to know that Russia is rigging the election. But oh, by the way, the election can't possibly be rigged. So they can't really get their story straight. But is it a coincidence that Julian Assange had his uh, internet link intentionally severed by a state party this weekend? Of course, the internet is just one of his only means of contact with the outside world. He's been locked up in the Ecuadorian embassy for more than four years. And earlier this month, Assange claimed that his organization would aim to publish documents every single week in the run-up to the U.S. Election Day on November 8th. So, of course, then he gets his Internet link severed. Now, we know that the establishment media is totally bought and paid for, controlled by the Clinton campaign. So they're absolutely not going to be covering these WikiLeaks releases, which is one of the reasons why Alex Jones is in her crosshairs, because InfoWars is putting out the truth that they don't want you to see. CNN actually came out and said that it is illegal for anyone but CNN to look into the WikiLeaks emails. It isn't. 
But we should all be shaken to the core that the establishment corporate media is trying to push out this narrative that only they should be able to have access to information. They're actively trying to control your access to the truth. They don't think that you're smart enough to be able to sift through all of the information that's out there. Because let's not forget, just last week, President Obama said that there needs to be some sort of a news curator to filter out the truth, make it easier for people to get the truth. So, of course, this is the truth according to those in power. Okay, I think most people are relatively intelligent enough to be able to sift through the massive data that's out there. Google immediately releases their fact check filter. So this is going to be great for people with zero critical thinking skills. And this is the dumbed down compliant citizenry of despotic dreams. And what we know from these WikiLeaks emails that the, the Democratic Party, that's the kind of people that they're hoping to raise is this compliant citizenry. So people need to understand that control of the news media is instrumental. It is a key feature of a totalitarian government. And one of the reasons why the United States has worked for so long with relative freedom is because of the First Amendment and freedom of speech and the protections of freedom of the press. And right now we are witnessing a very slippery slope of authoritarianism creeping into our country. In fact, we have some people out there in the media actively celebrating the fact that Hillary Clinton has come out saying that she is going to treat the First Amendment and independent journalists with the same dictatorial powers that she claims to despise in Vladimir Putin. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Owen Troyer with you. I'm about to be joined by Leanne McAdoo and Margaret Howe. Project Veritas has just released a scathing, well, one video in a series of videos, but truly unbelievable investigative reporting from James O'Keefe and Project Veritas. Here are some of the highlights from the first video release. If you're there and you're protesting and you do these actions, mm -hmm. you will be attacked at Trump rallies. That's what we want. People will, will freak the f out. The security team will freak out, and his supporters will lose their sh. We are contracted directly with the DNC and the campaign. Both. There's a double blind there. No. So they can plausibly deny that they knew anything about it. There's a script. Oh, there is a script. There's a script. Okay. There's a script of engagement. Sometimes the crazies bite, and sometimes the crazies don't bite. They're starting confrontations in the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? They're not starting confrontations the volunteers. in the rally. Because once they're inside the rally, they're under Secret Service's control. When they're outside the rally... Mm -hmm. They're more affected out. They're harder to get in. The media will cover it no matter where it happens. I assume it's always in the rally. Initiating the conflict by having leading conversations with people who are naturally psychotic. You can message to draw them out mm -hmm. and draw them to punch you. Prepare to go wherever these events are, which means we have to have a central kind of agitator training. Yep. Nobody's really supposed to know about me. <laughs> so the Chicago protest, when they shut all that, that was us. It was more him than me, but none of okay. this is supposed to come back to us. Because <laughs> we want it coming from people. We don't want it to come from the party. Mm. We pay to do shit. Make no mistake. Over the last 20 years, I have paid off a few homeless guys to do some crazy stuff. And I've also taken them for dinner, and I've also made uh -huh. sure they had a hotel and a, and a shower, and I've put them in a program. Mm -hmm. Like, I've done that. Well, Leanne, Margaret, perhaps just as scathing as the WikiLeaks releases, these videos are pretty damaging to the Democratic Party. Right. There is no end to the villainy. And, you know, months back when we first started exposing this and talking about how they were busing in these protesters, they were being paid to go off at the Trump rallies to make the Trump protesters, um, the Trump supporters look bad. We were actually vilified. I, I, know, I know The Intercept, for one, ran a hit piece on us saying, how dare you push out this meme that there's these paid protesters? That's a total lie. And indeed, now here comes Project Veritas with a slam dunk. 
Margaret? Did you hear what he said about plausible deniability? They don't want any of this linked to him. It's so obvious. The problem that I'm having, Owen, so we know last Friday, for example, that Trump tape leak, it was covered 23 times by all three major networks. The, the WikiLeaks revelations that are all bombshells got one total minute. So people really have to be watching this because, of course, it's going on. And oh, by the way, throughout that tape, at one point they ask, does Hillary know about this? What does she know about? She knows about all of it, mm -hmm. all of it. She knows this is going on. It's going on on her behalf. And they just want to give that little line of plausible deniability. And this is a 16 plus minute long piece. And this is just the first part in a multi-part series. So there's more stuff that's going to come out if you can even believe it. Well, and whatever plausibility or deniability they thought they had, and that's pretty much over with now. I mean, with this video, they are caught admitting what they've done at these protests or at these Trump rallies to agitate people. And it's exactly what we saw in the mainstream media say that Trump supporters were doing. No, it's actually the Democratic people and the people they're funding to put out there. And, you know, there's so much about this. Like you said, there's only there's this is one video in the whole series. Mm -hmm. And something that um, James O'Keefe said is we will the mainstream media cover this? Will right. the mainstream media address this at all? You just talked about the Trump tapes. They wanted to cover that all day long. Mm -hmm. Do you expect any coverage from the mainstream media on this? No, and well, that's the exact same thing Julian Assange said, is that whatever he's gonna drop, it's gonna be bombshell. It could devastate the Democratic Party if the media picks it up. Mm -hmm. And that was his key point that he made. And so this is again happening um, with James O'Keefe and his amazing work. He actually tweeted out a little earlier, uh, there was a video of a corgi trying to get up the <laughs> stairs and they're looping this video of a corgi fighting against this. That was what the, the media is showing you not James O'Keefe's bombshell video. I want to point out that we have been covering this for weeks and weeks. So yes, we, we knew that this was going on. Alex has been talking about this for weeks and specifically related to the Charlotte uh, protesters that literally burned down the city of Charlotte. We knew that police on the ground, they said that over 60 or 70% of the people coming in, they're holding out of state licenses. They're being bussed in from other places. These are orchestrated protests that are being paid to agitate, to destroy communities, to try to take down anybody that supports Trump. And you covered this this morning. The uh, uh, in, also in North Carolina, the Republican headquarters, that could be burned down. You know, I, I can't wait to see if that was actually a paid stunt at this point, because we know that they're capable of doing this kind of thing. Well, I'm not sure if we'll ever find out. Maybe perhaps there'll be some information on that in the next video that Project Veritas releases. But if we have any indication of the question I posed to you, will the mainstream media cover this? Fox News has already canceled interviews with James O'Keefe. This is pretty unprecedented. Why would Fox News not want to cover this? Right. Well, because they're all in collusion. They they've got to get Hillary Clinton in, and that's you know that's one of the the pieces that we hear in this video. This is uh, Operative Scott Foval. He says it doesn't matter what the friggin' legal and ethics people say. We need to win this MF. I mean that's they. That sums it up right there. They do not care if it's legal or ethical. They want to win no matter what. And so they've taken this bird dogging tactic. Kit Daniels breaks it down pretty well in his article. You can also find it there in the Project Veritas article. But they, uh, they send these people in. There was a woman who claimed that she was punched in the face by a Trump um, supporter. That was one of their activists. So they go in and they're inciting violence and then they go and speak directly to the press and say, oh my gosh, I was assaulted. My goodness, you recall all of the activists that just spontaneously decided to block the highway, um, blocked by protesters there. And we reported on that at the time that they had ties to the Open Society Foundation and we were called conspiracy theorists for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, not only that, but don't you like it how they take something that's actually true for the other side? Like, for example, if somebody goes outside wearing a Trump hat, we've covered this on Infowars. This man was pummeled by a crowd, beaten senseless. He was running for his life and yet, they're trying to, to pin the violence on people that actively support Trump. But you and I know this, and we've covered uh, Trump rallies before. Those are some of the most gracious, polite people I have ever encountered. Typically, the ones screaming and yelling and pushing are always the Hillary supporters every time without fail. It's remarkable. Well, we also re recall, I believe it was in Costa Mesa, California, where they had those really violent uh, protesters coming out, egging that woman, cornering her. And there was probably 50 people around yelling, and she was... They wouldn't allow her in the building because they didn't want this huge crowd to break through the doors. I mean, totally violent protesters. And yet CNN, MSNBC, the networks, 
they were all talking about how violent the Trump attendees right. were. I mean, it's just total psyop happening. And that's the media that we now know is colluding with the Clinton campaign. We've seen that in the WikiLeaks. You know, and it's crazy too that uh, you alluded to earlier. I mean, Alex Jones and Infowars has been talking about this for a while. How they pay these people to agitate. It's it's you know. It's so crazy to say that. It's like, oh my gosh, that's so out there. That's so wild. How could that actually be going on? No, this is what's yeah. going on. And, you know, I, I would like to just salute Project Veritas and James O'Keefe. You know, this video is not only, it's so courageous, this type of journalism, but very well produced. You know, I think for, you know, nonpartisan, undecided, just straight down the line, this is a video that they did a great job producing and, and really just hitting home. I mean, it really hits home. It almost it gave me chills. Right. I think that honestly, though, with this, Owen, we saw this with the uh, Planned Parenthood sting operation. They tried to vilify the journalist, get him indicted on some mm -hmm. trumped up charge. You know, th this young man, he really did put his neck out there. But you, you see in the media, and I, I'm waiting for this to happen, you know, in the days to come where they're, they're going to actually say, you know what, that those words were spent. They were heavily edited. Right. Well, you can't make this stuff up. Those were complete sentences. Calling there. for the jailing of that There's journal. no way to edit, you know, what these people were saying to make that narrative fit. There just isn't. Yeah, and it really, I think, shows the psych. It shows the psychological disposition of the people that we're dealing with that work inside the Democratic Party right. that are working for Hillary Clinton. Um, as you pointed out, these people have no ethics. They don't care about ethics. They just want to get Hillary Clinton in. Um, and I don't know what they're motivated by. I, I don't understand Reed, if it's darkness. You know, yeah, <laughs> maybe money. But uh, certainly not ethical things, certainly not the American Constitution. That's going to do it for the nightly news. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night, 7 o'clock central, Infowars.com slash show.